I don't want my heart to grow more than my bicep or whatever, if you're a bodybuilder. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> Hello, friends. In this video, you're going to find out from recent research how clenbuterol makes you gain muscle even without exercise, how clenbuterol improves your metabolic function without changing insulin signaling, and finally, how clenbuterol surprisingly improves the function of our livers. But before we find all this out, please subscribe to the channel, like the video, and comment on the video for the sake of the algorithm. Clenbuterol is a drug that Dan Duchesne introduced to bodybuilding in the 90s. I was wondering, you know, if Dan was like, was he really digging into research a lot, or were these drugs somewhat popular in the 90s? It turns out there was a lot of research in the mid-90s about clenbuterol increasing muscle protein synthesis and making basically cattle uh, more muscular. So he came across them. They were, they were popular topics back then. Since then, though, there have been some interesting papers I came across that basically delve into the mechanisms behind clenbuterol's action. So clenbuterol is used by bodybuilders usually to lose body fat or during their cutting phase before a competition. It's, there, are, there are adrenaline receptors in the alpha category, which we've talked about recently. There's also a beta category. Nebivolol is the most selective blocker of the beta-1 receptor. Why? Because the beta-1 receptor, why do we want that? Because the beta-1 receptor is blocker, blocker activator. Blocker. Nebivolol oh, nebivolol blocker, blocker. Yeah. sorry. Just to give it some nebivolol. perspective, right? Uh, the beta-3 receptor isn't very well understood. It was thought to cause some effect on uncoupling proteins, like uh, DNP sort of, but browning of fat. But then later it was thought that maybe it's not that, but it's the beta-1 receptor actually. And instead the beta-3 receptor mainly affects bladder control or something. What we're talking about here is the beta-2 receptor. The beta-2 receptor is an adrenaline receptor that's frequently found in muscle tissue. It's more found in muscle tissue than the other beta receptors. So, what clenbuterol is, is an agonist, that's what you're saying, agonist of the beta-2 receptor. Basically what it does is it acts like adrenaline in your body, but it's specific to receptors in muscle cells. Now, people know it causes you to lose fat, and most people know it makes you a bit stronger and causes you to gain some muscle. But no one really knew the exact mechanisms behind which this was working. And it's interesting because recently we were talking about rapamycin used in fasts, and I thought you'd find it interesting to find out the mechanisms that have been revealed. Mm. So, we should include papers, but what I wanted to show you guys, to put it in perspective, first of all, aerobic exercise, meaning like endurance exercise, activates a pathway called AKT. But in turn, AKT in aerobic exercise doesn't affect mTOR, the mechanistic or mammalian target of rapamycin. This is the big growth pathway in the body that's evolutionarily conserved across species. Interestingly, when you do, when you go jogging, it activates AKT, but not mTOR. When you lift weights, I looked into this a little bit. I wanted to determine that this was for sure true. Lifting weights, that the load stress on the body causes hypertrophy via mTOR. And it's unclear if you blocked mTOR whether you would totally block adaptation. It may be so. There are studies using rapamycin on rodents to discover this. Actually, it is so. When, when you use rapamycin on rodents, they don't, well, we'll talk about with clenbuterol in a second. So Rapamycin blocks mTOR for about five days, so we use it when on advanced fasting if we're trying to block mTOR and resensitize to it, which you don't believe in the resensitization. But, yeah, but still, like we but, want mTOR for muscle building and for anti-aging, we want to uh, modulate or mitigate or have mTOR at certain times, not all the time. Yeah, and so mTOR, the R is for rapamycin. It's the target of rapamycin because it was named after the drug that was developed out of the soil in the Rapaui something islands. But anyway, so when you exercise, this is the pathway that causes muscular hypertrophy. It's AKT, affects mTOR. There are other things involved like glucose synthase, kinase 3, and a couple of other pathways, but it's mainly that, right? Interestingly, clenbuterol is actually an exercise mimetic. They finally can say for sure, you know, because what it does is it causes muscular hypertrophy in rodents through this pathway, the AKT and mTOR pathway. So that's why they can give uh, clenbuterol to cattle, and cattle will actually gain Dramatic. muscle yeah. without exercising. The cattle's just standing there eating grass all day. Also, in the rodent study that I'm talking about, they not only gave the rodents clenbuterol and let them roam free, where they gained a lot of body weight and muscle and everything, which was totally blocked by rapamycin. Totally. Then, so this is a completely uh, mTOR-dependent mechanism, but they also uh, bound their hind leg so that they couldn't use the leg, so it should atrophy, gave them clenbuterol, which would prevent the atrophy, but when they added rapamycin, almost complete, oh, actually completely stopped it. So both of those were completely stopped. There was one movement, which is denervation of one of the limbs, which rapamycin didn't completely stop, but the other things it did. So basically we know that clenbuterol causes 
muscular hypertrophy through mTOR, this pathway that we've been talking about a lot on the channel. And then I wanted to mention also that clenbuterol, people, so this was interesting about clenbuterol. When you take it, your glucose homeostasis improves, but your insulin sensitivity doesn't change and the amount of insulin you're producing doesn't change, but still your glucose homeostasis improves. When you're fasting, you spend out glucose faster and when you eat, the glucose turns into glycogen better. So all of these mechanisms are apparently dependent, this metabolic reprogramming, are apparently dependent on mTOR complex 2 specifically and AMP kinase. Interestingly here, by the way, the complex 2 is a complex that um, longevity people try not to block when they use rapamycin. If you use too much rapamycin, you'll block complex 2 and not just complex 1. And then that affects metabolic conditions. So interestingly, clenbuterol, while making you muscular through mTOR complex 1 and AKT, also turns on AMP kinase, this is the pathway that metformin works under to improve your metabolic condition. Oh, one more thing I want to mention before I finish. So it's very interesting. If you look at studies on TRT affecting longevity, you find that most of the, there's no clear benefits really, except for one thing, diabetic conditions and liver health. Why liver health? Sometimes we think of androgenic steroids as causing liver cancer. That's true. But before they cause liver cancer, they cause lipolysis of fat in the liver and they improve the metabolic uh, function. By the way, steroids are thought to work through the same pathway to cause hypertrophy. It's actually been tested. For example, if you if you take rodents and inhibit their testosterone production, you find their IGF-1 mRNA decreases, and a couple of other things decrease. When you give them nandrolone, these things go right back, the AKT and all these kind of things. You're saying that steroids also well, act under the this... mTOR pathway? Yeah, yeah, and they depend on that pathway also. It's thought. Mm. It's not fully understood. But what I was going to say is, so, TRT improves lipolysis of the liver, so people that have better like insulin responses and all this kind of stuff. So you see this with them and with adrenaline. In general, with adrenaline, it causes lipolysis of the liver. Also, when you fast, the first two days you have higher adrenaline, ghrelin, you lose most of the fat of the liver. It turns out not only do you lose fat, but somehow clenbuterol not only causes hypertrophy of muscle, but autophagy of hepatocytes, which means liver cells that are, have proteins damaged and things like that are recycled in the body. while improving muscular hypertrophy, which is very interesting. So I never expected this part. And it's also unclear to the researchers how this happened. So these pathways that clenbuterol works across are the same pathways that our body's own natural hormones work across. We're just amplifying it because clenbuterol is activating the same receptors that adrenaline, our natural fight or flight hormone is acting across. So yeah, but it should be better because your natural adrenaline will affect your heart rate a little bit more than clenbuterol would per amount it affects the skeletal muscle. What I'm usually against clenbuterol use. I'm just saying one of the problems may be, and the reason why we see so much heart damage, cardiovascular problems and side effects of clenbuterol is purely the dosage, right? There's a lot of diminishing returns of these things. Maybe a small amount of clenbuterol has these benefits with less of the side effects and maybe a large amount. Now the side effects start outweighing the benefits. But you can also think about like steroids in terms of how steroids for people who have taken steroids or taken trenbolone especially before, you can sort of feel the effect that a certain steroid has on your adrenaline levels. Like if you take DECA, you don't really feel wound up and stuff. But when you take trenbolone, you feel that. And now you can realize, oh, maybe part of the extra gains I get from tren are through this adrenaline mechanism. Mm -hmm. Now, oftentimes I used to get asked the question, should I take a beta blocker with, with clenbuterol? And I would always say, well, you're doing something very damaging to your body other than metabolic function and liver function. Adrenaline is a stress hormone. So it's always like you're doing damage. And I always also don't know how it, they could interact. Maybe there would be something that would cause an arrhythmia issue. But really, if there wasn't, you would want the most selective beta-1 blocker, nebivalol, so that you would limit the amount of clenbuterol affects the beta-1. Although there is a more specific beta agonist than clenbuterol, I think it's called sal something. Sal. There's two sal ones. One of them is more selective. What else can be learned from this is that blocking all of your beta receptors all of the time is gonna have the side effects of reducing hypertrophy, the side effect of Actually. making you worse off metabolic and the side effect of you know, not getting the liver benefit of having some amount of adrenaline. So this is why we see people that take large amounts of propanolol all day, every day, they start having side effects of too low of adrenaline. The body is naturally supposed to have periods of time where there's fight or flight and naturally have times when there's rest and relaxation. Now, clenbuterol has got a really long half-life. It's activating these receptors 24 hours a day, including while we sleep. That's why when I'm using clenbuterol, if I'm gonna use clenbuterol, I'm using nebivalol in the daytime 
and, mm. and nighttime because it has a long half-life also. And then I'm also using propanolol at night. And yes, I'm blocking some of the benefits of clenbuterol as far as hypertrophy, fat burning, everything else while I sleep. But I think it's worth it to swing the pendulum the other, other way because I don't think it's healthy to have the body in the fight or flight mode 24 hours a day, activating beta receptors 24 hours a day. I think it's healthier to give her a rest from it. And what better time to rest than when you're sleeping and improve sleep quality by bringing the stress hormones down. I agree, but we should caveat that by saying we're talking about using beta blockers as a performance enhancing drug or as a prophylactic measure because you're doing something dangerous to your body, like taking steroids, which do the exact opposite of what beta blockers do. So it's some kind of attenuation of the damage potential. But I wanted to mention something. You said something that's actually in one of the papers I was reading today. Propranolol use can actually inhibit mTOR in response to exercise. So we don't oh, want to be on. It's even worse than what we realized. We don't want to be on propranolol during exercise time. Well, certainly, and propranolol, keep in mind, is the most non-selective beta blocker. So it's not the same thing as nabivolol. This one is a sledgehammer, sort of. But anyway, I, I hope you guys find this slightly interesting. People who came over from my channel might, because we talked a lot about mTOR and also AMP kinase. This is the metformin pathway. This sounds like a great deal. But you always have that heart rate issue. Just the net effect of it. Would you use clenbuterol if you need to transform your body fast? I wouldn't personally because I'm on edge with adrenaline naturally. Like you sort of to some degree. And it if, would cause me serious issues. And if you have a friend, test subject, or client who wants to transform very quickly and they're not sensitive to adrenaline, they have a normal adrenaline and stress response. Yeah, in that case, you know what I would do though? I would try to get that other, the... When I Salbutamol. It's not salbutamol, it's salmeterol, something like that. It's another one. It's the most selective. I've reviewed it in my beta. I have two videos on beta blockers at Leo Longevity Channel. One, this first one, I think, reviews all the selectivities. And I mentioned the one that's the most selective for some reason. I think Duchenne just didn't know about it, and clenbuterol got popular. I like salbutamol because it's very similar to clenbuterol, but with a much shorter half-life. So we can have a period of time where we have higher adrenergic. So, so what does this also mean, by the way? We didn't even get to that point. So if you take a pre-workout before the gym, you're, you're stronger in the gym. Most people think you're stronger in the gym, therefore that should add to extra gains. But also your adrenaline levels specifically, that's why you feel wired, mainly your adrenaline levels, they're higher also. So you have genetic, a change in gene transcription to cause you to get this AKT mTOR more pronounced. So there's even more reason to use, you know, to use a stimulant. Stimulants, yeah. I yeah, mean, stimulant pre-workout, good. More strength, more power, more hypertrophy. Stimulants all day, you burn yourself out, you have... Yeah, that's what I was going to say. At the same time, like if you, if you can't sleep well and you can't rest well, you won't grow. So there's a, you know, the, I wanted to caveat that. So in the world of natural supplements or over the counter or mainstream supplements, pre-workouts are actually very effective. Depends on the person and situation, but for the most part, train harder, uh, less or higher pain tolerance yeah. and better muscle contractions, more energy and more hypertrophy. Yeah. One more thing I wanted to mention, keep in mind, if you, if this does sound like a great deal to remember that beta blockers, are one of the only cardiac drugs that help to remodel and reverse left ventricle hypertrophy, which is a hallmark in athletes and steroid users. By the way, there's a recent study in 2022 or 21 comparing cardiovascular conditions among steroid using and non-steroid using power athletes. And there's a significant difference. All of the differences, or most of them, are things that are slightly repaired by a beta blocker. So keep that in mind. When you do use CLEN, you're turning on that whatever that deformation is to the heart that comes from both power, being a power athlete and using steroids and using growth hormone, which is a separate thing, you're encouraging all of that. Big Coach Trevor said that probably one of the most dangerous things he's used, despite having used everything in the underground bodybuilding world, is clenbuterol. Mm -hmm. That's what caused some damage to his heart. So, and I of really course, that's so. because of the high dosage use for using it for too long and it did not mitigating it by nebivolol because that's before nebivolol yeah. uh, was known about. Now, would you use nebivolol during a workout? Is okay, right? Yeah, I don't it's, think it's, a, it's selective it's enough. A, yeah, it's very selective. But not propanolol during a workout. Well, why? I but then would again, use, the devil's in the dose. That's true. I agree with you. Yeah. But why I would also use nebivolol if I was really using steroids is because I don't want my heart rate to be, I don't want my heart to grow more than my bicep or whatever if you're a bodybuilder. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean?
So technically, if you're using the bill volume, you got 24 hour insurance that's a little bit lower because it's going to be a little bit higher. Also, not keep in mind, your heart won't just grow and adapt more, but the heart rate actually rises once you get on steroids. Mm -hmm. Go from being natural to on steroids, it'll rise, you'll notice. So it's actually more natural or healthier to use <laughs> Nebivalol with steroids That's than to use is. steroids without Nebivalol. So this is a case where adding in chemistry so, yeah. is actually more natural and more healthy to do so. This has been one of the main things that I've tried to do in the last two years is introduce protective prophylactic medications. So because when I was using steroids, not a bodybuilder, but I was armless and stuff, you know, I was always in fear of damaging my body. I didn't know anything to mitigate it. So now these people know some, have some ideas of things to do. Nebivalol, I think, should be in everyone's tool. Really. Be swell and swole, friends of Freedom Pioneers of Human Evolution. A day natty is a day wasted.